Uh, well, back to into Solar Sunday at gasovis.com. We're going to have a look at the Solar Cycle, Solar Cycle 24, see where it's been and where it's going, uh, or probably going to go over the next few months. It's been a long time since we've done a solar update. It's back in August 2013, can you believe? So it's certainly due a solar uh, Sunday, and today is it. I hope you enjoy the video. Now, before I get on with the uh, solar Sunday video, just want to mention the advertising of this video ads on my pages at gasworthies.com. If you press play on the video ads, you'll be supporting gasworthies.com. And thanks very much for doing that. We've also got the content ads, which are links to articles. Just click through uh, the link. If you're interested in any article, you can often read it. Same time, that's what this will get royalty fee on what you're doing. And thanks so much for doing that. It helps pay for the website. So thanks for getting involved and supporting GabsWeatherVids.com. So this is the current uh, situation in terms of the sun on our side of the solar disk today. This is from the website SolarHam. Dot net. We have got some uh, sunspots there over the solar disk. Quite a big one there. Uh, quite a big one there. Not that many of them, but what we've got are quite uh, strong sort of sunspots, quite intense. So actually, I do believe that the uh, official sort of forecast of the uh, solar solar day, the official designation, is that we've got moderate activity. Several times through the uh, winter, uh, we reached the uh, strong uh, sort of uh, intense categories um, for the sunspot activity. We've had a second peak in the solar cycle I'll show you the chart now uh, so that you can see what's been going on now typically in a normal solar cycle you do get two peaks and this chart shows you uh, the last solar cycle solar cycle 23 compared to the current solar cycle solar cycle 24 so let's just have a look at solar cycle 23 first of all and we can see that uh, with solar cycle 23 we did indeed get that first peak through the year 2000 and then we got the second peak uh late in 2001 into the start of 2002 now normally in a typical solar uh, cycle the second peak is not as strong doesn't reach uh, the first peak the first peak is normally the overall peak of the solar maximum remember the solar maximum and solar minimums that we're talking about here is the 11 year uh, cycle of activity on the sun it uh, starts the sun, the sun cycle starts at solar minimum reaches solar maximum in the middle of the cycle and then it goes back to solar minimum again and then the next cycle starts and so on uh, through the solar cycles so the first uh, peak is normally stronger than the second peak the second peak normally doesn't reach the threshold of the first peak but this solar cycle, very different uh, solar cycle, very unusual solar cycle, because we have the first peak at the end of 2011, and then we get the second peak, which has just occurred at the start of 2014. And the second peak has actually been ever so slightly, not much in it, but ever so slightly stronger than the first peak. That really is quite unusual and doesn't happen uh, very often. Now, despite the fact that we have had the second peak of solar cycle, I think that probably is the peak. I don't think we'll get to that again, although given how unusual this solar cycle is, you can't really rule anything out. But I've got a suspicion that will be the actual peak of cycle 24. Um, but... Uh, given uh, that we've reached that peak, uh, we're now likely uh, to go down uh, into uh, wards for solar minimum of cycle 24, and then we'll start so cycle 25 uh, at the minimum point again. Now, it's not going to be a linear process. We're probably going to see a gradual sort of decline off, or we will see a gradual decline off over the next two or three years, but we'll still get peaks along the way. So don't expect that every month will be uh, weaker than the last month, last month, last month. <coughs> won't be like that we get uh, several peaks along the way but eventually as yet through to around 2017 2018 we're going to arrive at this point here uh, where uh, we're going to get very weak activity very little activity and of course as we get through to 2019 2020 which is when the actual minimum will occur there'll be hardly any activity at all you can see that this solar cycle is much weaker than solar cycle 23 despite that we've had that peak uh, at the start of 2014 uh, we're definitely way down on the activity that we had uh, in cycle 23 and of course that cycle uh, was very similar to many of the solar cycles in the 20th century uh, being a really strong solar cycle this chart uh, from NASA perhaps shows it even better how weak this cycle is compared to the last solar cycle uh, 
uh, despite the second peak that we've had at the start of 2014, way down on the activity that occurred in Solar Cycle 23. And it's going to be the weakest Solar Cycle probably uh, for around uh, a century, something like that. The start of the 20th century had quite a weak Solar Cycle. I think we're going to be on a par uh, with that, but certainly nothing like the activity that we have in Solar Cycle 23. Now, interestingly, uh, Solar Cycle 24 is mirroring uh, Solar Cycle 5 quite closely. Solar Cycle 5 uh, happened in the year, uh, or started in the year 1798 and ran through to the year 1810. And then Solar Cycle 6, another very weak Solar Cycle, went from uh, 1810 to 1823. We're mirroring Solar Cycle 5 very closely at the moment. And the, those two solar cycles, 5 and 6, occurred in what is known as the Dalton Minimum, a uh, very minimum activity on the surface of the, of the Sun, also occurred in a period of very cold winters uh, in the United Kingdom. And the reason this is all we put, the reason that we do these solar cycle videos, is that there's quite a bit of evidence that when solar activity is weak, particularly around solar minimum, but even in, in the maximum of the cycle, if it's a weak maximum, uh, there is quite a bit of that, uh, there's quite a bit of assertion, not that well proven, but certainly anecdotal evidence that blocking increases in the Northern Hemisphere, and particularly on our side of the Northern Hemisphere, around Europe, there's quite a bit of evidence that uh, blocking increases when solar activity is minimal. It has an effect on the jet stream, the jet stream goes south, and that allows blocking uh, to form over the pole and come down into Europe. So. The reason we do these videos uh, to monitor where uh, solar activity is going because it can have a knock-on effect, particularly in terms of winter conditions, less other uh, times of the year, spring, summer, autumn. But particularly in winter, there is that connection between weak solar activity and sort of an increased risk of blocking. But of course, we've had a very wet uh, winter, no blocking this winter that's occurred around this solar maximum. And so that is a weak solar maximum. It still was the solar maximum through the course of this, uh, through the course of this winter. Quite interesting as well, by the way, I'll just go back and show you uh, something quite interesting that uh, we have the maximum of cycle 23 that occurred in the year 2000 just there uh, and then we have the maximum uh, this winter in 2014 quite interesting that both of those maximums occur around a time of quite serious flooding for the British Isles in the year 2000 we have the floods in the autumn of 2000 and this uh, winter 2014 been a very wet winter had quite a bit of flooding again not as bad as what happened in the autumn of 2000 but nevertheless very wet winter and there was a lot of flooding across many parts of the country now it's interesting how those two maximums have occurred around periods of flooding. Uh, you would have to go back through many more solar cycles and analyse those solar maximums, compare them to the weather conditions that were going on at the time, uh, to see whether this is a trend that occurs through the solar cycles, that you get an increased risk of flooding, um, probably manifested from a uh, strengthening of the jet stream and stronger westerly winds. You would have to uh, go back through many cycles to see whether uh, the solar maximum is having an effect there in terms of an increased risk of flooding uh, around those maximums of the solar cycle. But very interesting anyway how that occurred um, in both cycle 23 and now again in cycle 24. But getting back to solar cycle 5 and the way we're sort of uh, trending very similar to solar cycle 5, the pink uh, line here uh, that you can see on this chart is solar cycle 5 in terms of the sunspot activity or the recorded sunspot activity at the time. At what you have to remember, of course, it's a long time ago 1798 to 1810 so some of the sunspots that we would now uh, be recording perhaps weren't recorded back then so if anything you will probably think that solar cycle 5 may 
be a little bit stronger than this if we was recording it now compared to uh, 1798 to 1810. But anyway, the pink line is where solar cycle 5 uh, fits in, in terms of solar activity. The blue line here is where solar cycle 24 uh, fits in. And you can see that, yes, we are trending very much along the lines of solar cycle 5. Uh, we start off here at solar minimum of both 5 and 24, and we go up to the solar maximum, which has occurred or is occurring around this time. And yes, very, uh, very much uh, similar in terms of solar cycle 5 and in terms of solar cycle 24. Now, solar cycle 5 was uh, followed by an uh, even weaker cycle, solar cycle 6. This shows you uh, solar cycle 5, which is just here, solar cycle 6, which is just here. Two very, very weak solar cycles. As I say, they occurred around the time of the Dalton minimum, a time of uh, severely cold winters in uh, Europe and for the British Isles as well. This red line, by the way, is uh, showing us the first peak that we had of cycle 24. Things have moved on a little bit uh, from that, of course. Cycle 24 has peaked again uh, at the start of 2014, so don't worry about the red line. But this blue line here, or the blue peaks and troughs, are the uh, maximums and minimums of solar cycle 5 and solar cycle 6. And you can see that if we carry on with this idea, because we're training very similar to solar cycle 5, uh, for this solar cycle. You can see that the idea is that solar cycle 25, the next solar cycle, if it carries on mirroring uh, what happened with solar cycles 5 and solar cycle 6, solar cycle 25, the next cycle, is likely to be even weaker probably uh, than, cycle uh, than cycle 24. So, yeah, we had solar cycle 5, solar cycle 6, very weak cycles that came around the dial to minimum. We're mirroring solar cycle 5 very closely with 24, and you would assume, it would imply, as we go on to solar cycle 25, uh, next, uh, next solar cycle, probably occurring around 2020, we're likely, if this carries on, to mirror solar cycle 6, and uh, solar cycle 6 even weaker. And I'll say the reason this is important, uh, I'll just go to the Central England Temperature page from Hadley, this goes right way back to 1659. The reason this is important is that those two cycles, uh, 25 uh, and 6, occurred in a very cold uh, time. So this is uh, the period with solar cycle 5 going from 1798 to 1810. Uh, lots of cold winters in there. Uh, for instance, we'll just deal with January. Uh, Central temperature there, 1.7, 1800, uh, 2.8. 1802, 1.6, 1803, 1.6, 1805, 2.1. On and on it goes through uh, that period that was running through solar cycle 5, and uh, year after year after year, we're getting very cold conditions. And then, as we go through to solar cycle 6, which starts, of course, in 1810 and goes through to 1823, uh, again, uh, some very cold winters, and actually even colder uh, winters uh, through that uh, solar cycle. So 1814, for instance, ferociously cold January with a central income temperature of minus 2.9, and again 1820 uh, with a uh, central income temperature of minus 0.3, and 1823, the end of solar cycle 6, uh, sees a uh, central income temperature for January of minus 0.8. And many of the uh, January in between most severely cold Januarys are typically cold 1.2, 2.6, 1.9, 0.3, 2.7. Uh, a free mild ish sort of Januarys there from 1817 to 1819, probably coming off the soda maximum of soda cycle 26. Uh, does turn a little bit milder for a few years uh, there. But the overall idea, of course, is that the Dalton minimum occurs around uh, a period of very cold, if not severe weather, uh, for the British Isles. And, well, we've got to take into account, of course, that this was back in the time of the Little Ice Age. There's several reasons for the Little Ice Age. Primarily, solar activity have been very weak for several hundred years, uh, but there's also other things going on. So we're not in an ice age now. We've come out of the ice age, uh, warmed up quite a lot. So we're 
probably not going to be looking at anything as bad as uh, occurred in the Dalton Minimum. I'm not suggesting that. But we've seen over the last few years, particularly in 2010, that we can get it very, very cold still, even though we've come out of the Little Ice Age, and even though depending on what your point of view is, we're in the era of climate change. Um, despite all of that, we can still get it very, very cold when we get the blocking in the right position. And, of course, it's the blocking that's important with this, because when we're in these weak solar cycles, we're having these solar maximums, uh, weak solar maximums and prolonged uh, solar minimums, when this happens, we get the increased risk of blocking. And as I say, we saw it in 2010, saw it again in March 2013, that when we get the blocking in exactly the right position, uh, it can still get very, very, very cold. Um, and we've got to watch out for this, I think, because uh, if this cycle, and I've no reason to suspect that it uh, is going to deviate from Solar Cycle 5. It's been running uh, along the lines of Solar Cycle 5 from the very start, so I would assume it's going to carry on now at Solar Minimum, mirroring Cycle 5 quite a lot. If that happens, and then if 25, Solar Cycle 25 mirrors Solar Cycle 6, I've no doubt we'll see more very blocked winter, despite what's happened this winter, where we've had strong westerlies and no blocking, but I've no doubt we'll see a lot of uh, blocking coming up over the next few years. Um, I've got to watch out for it, because it can still get very, very cold. Uh, so my suspicion is that as we go through towards the end of this decade and the start of uh, the 2020s, we've got to watch out for some really quite uh, serious blocking and cold conditions. But coming back to what's going on right now, uh, finally, in summary, uh, we've probably reached solar maximum, although it's difficult with this solar cycle because it catches you out uh, to sort of definitively say we've reached so much, but I've got a suspicion that peak that we had at the start of 2014 won't be better. So I think we've reached solar maximum. The sun uh, flipped its magnetic field in the northern hemisphere at the end of last year. The southern hemisphere is uh, flipping any time now. It's a real struggle, though, to get these hemispheres to flip, by the way. Uh, and that's something else that sort of suggests that the next cycle, 25, is going to be a very weak one. Uh, but I think we're more or less at solar maximum, or we've just passed solar maximum. We're going to gradually decline now over the next few years into the solar minimum of cycle 24 and the start of cycle 25. It won't be a linear process. There will still be peaks and troughs along the way. Uh, but gradually now, I think we're on a downward spiral to the minimum of solar cycle 24. Hope you found the video interesting uh, and enjoyed it. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.